I went the world champion. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> How's that feel to get that, uh, just that big weight off your shoulder? Yeah, it felt pretty good. I yeah. won't lie. Yeah, got pretty emotional at the finish line there. Yeah, I noticed <laughs> that before you came there, you kind of just kind of took a, you soaked in that moment. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and um, I mean, it's been a long time coming. You obviously have tons of accolades, and you finished what, I think, runner up five times? And, and yeah, this something race. like that. Yeah, and, I mean, you know, who's counting, right? Yeah. Who, who cares now? Yeah. You finally got your one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So where's this rank? I mean, in all your accolades that you have, where does this particular uh, award or this honor rank? Uh, I'd say pretty high. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, in the world of obstacle racing and Spartan, it's like the big one, the big world championship. Sure. So, um, and it's kind of arbitrary that it happens to be the beast distance, 21K. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it was like, it's been that way since the beginning and like, it is what it is. And so, I mean, you just have to show up and perform at that race and that's what I did. Well, not only did you show up and perform, but you did in these, this extreme elements, something unlike you've ever faced before. Yeah. Talk about those elements. Uh, one, you came out here a week earlier, obviously, yeah. probably to get used to, get accustomed to everything. But was there any training before that coming out here? Oh yeah. Um, so we actually bought a sauna mm -hmm. to get ready for this, oh, like wow. a big barrel sauna. Yeah. It's really sweet. Um, but then I would do all my all my workouts. I would follow up by going straight into the sauna for mm -hmm. 30 or 40 minutes, like oh, while okay. your core is already high. Yeah. And then like every three or four days, I would do like a pretty specific, like super hard, super high intensity uh, treadmill run inside with mm -hmm. no fan. Yeah. And then. I like an hour and a half of like intervals in the treadmill and then I'd go straight out to the sauna and just like bake myself in there. So I think that was a pretty effective way to prepare because um, yeah, I mean, I didn't feel it was like hot out there mm -hmm. at all. Uh, but running in the sand is so muscular. Yeah. It was like, it really blew me away. Just like the muscular demand of like, because there's no return on your energy. Mm -hmm. So it just takes everything. Yeah, it just so, sucks your soul, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So after doing that for like, yeah, two hours, there was definitely uh, some fatigue yeah. going on. Well, it didn't show uh, up until <laughs> up until the finish line, but you said it was more emotions than it was yeah. fatigue. Maybe it was a little bit of emotional fatigue yeah, as well. Yeah, maybe a bit of both. Um, you, we talked earlier, you mentioned how you incorporate some, you've incorporated some cross training into, and some CrossFit type movement yeah. into, your, uh, into your training now. Yeah. I mean, talk about that. Yeah, totally. Um, I've always been like the kind of person who puts on muscle really quickly, so mm -hmm. I like, I kinda, jealous. I'm, I, so, I'm so jealous right now. I kind of shy away from it because, like, in order to be a good runner, you have to be like light and lean, mm -hmm. and like every pound you gain is like whatever, like a, two seconds off your mm -hmm. mile pace or something like that. So um, it's always like a game of like trying to be strong but trying not to gain too much mass. Mm -hmm. But I've really found this year like uh, incorporating more kind of deadlifts and things like that. Um, squats and lunges mm -hmm. and then like thrusters and then just doing some of the crossfit movements in order to like kind of like strengthen my core mm -hmm. and uh prepare for these events because they are running based but they're also set up in a way that kind of like beats you down yeah and like really takes it out of you by the end so yeah it's been really good and effective for me yeah you talked about the you know it being a running type of event but 35 obstacles and those obstacles obviously demand a lot out of you was was there any particular obstacle out there in that course that just kind of just you just either had problems with or you did just didn't care to see um well like the carries which i'm good at mm -hmm. they're just brutal though yeah especially in the sand because mm -hmm. you're you've been running up a sand dune for like five minutes and then now you have to pick up a 50 pound sandbag and carry it further up the sand dune and back around so it was like oh that was just awful and that was at the point right at the end before the end of the race mm -hmm. where i'm battling with another guy yeah sergey sergey and uh oh yeah really really painful moment yeah so i mean i like the sandbag carry because i'm good at it but it's just it's all it's yeah. awful not yeah. that uh, <laughs> um one thing uh you t what i've heard is typically a turning point in a lot of races is the spear throw yeah and uh i think you, you know you've had some good and bad experiences with yeah, that yeah. in the past yeah and uh when you came down and i noticed you, you took your time on that yeah and then you nailed it but there's no emotion yeah uh, but inside <laughs> were you just like yes oh uh, the spear throw is just like it's like pure relief mm -hmm. you're like oh gosh and it's something that kind of like looms over you before the race because like you can prepare 
as yeah. much as you want. You can do a thousand spear throws and mm -hmm. hit them all, and then you can show up to the race and miss it. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it's just one of those things that no matter how good you are at it, you can still, you still mess it up. Um, so yeah, once once you hit that, it's like okay, now I'm in control of yeah. my race. I'm in control, control. Okay, I know I can do all the other obstacles, no problem. Yeah, and as a, a CrossFitter, you know. F burpees, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Oh, Screw my those God. things. Yeah, I don't, Screw those things. And yeah, and, and burpees in sand right before oh. going up like a 200 meter sand dune. Yeah. No thanks. Did you do any burpees out in the course? No burpees. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I avoid them. Yeah, like, I try to avoid them. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do. I avoid them altogether. <laughs> yeah. I see them in program, I won't go in. Yeah, yeah, just don't, yeah, just yeah. don't do it. Don't well, do it. there's like <laughs> this thing where some people in obstacle racing in Spartan, they do burpees to train in case they miss an obstacle. Yeah. But then it's also like this kind of viewpoint where like, are you training to fail then? Exactly. Are yeah. you like, like, are you like anticipating that you're going to miss obstacles? So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't do many in training yeah. either. Yeah. Well, that goes. I mean, obviously, it's a lot, a huge mental game out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, it's you know, you're dealing 13.2 miles, the heat. I mean, this whatever you want to call this, a mountain of sand. Yeah, exactly. And um, and then 35 obstacles. Yeah. And if you're not there mentally, if you're preparing to lose, well, then you're a lost. Right. So yeah. it sounds like you already have that. You don't even think about that, so yeah, that killer mentality. Yeah, there's a huge mental component out there. Ooh. I think, uh, especially in this race, for me, the heat, the soft running, and uh, the like, pretty fierce competition. It was, uh, you had to want it. I think. Yeah. So talk about standing on that podium, but not just by yourself, but you got to share the podium with your wife. Yeah. And that's been a long time coming. I mean, you know, you, you stood on top of the podium at the Spartan Games. Yeah. But not at, you know, an, an event like this. Yeah. You know, how, how was that? Yeah. Honestly, it was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had shared the soft step before mm -hmm. at big races, but yeah. never at Spartan World Champs. Sure. So that was pretty pretty special yeah she said that she was actually more excited about you winning than she was winning <laughs> yeah uh, I, I mean you know yeah. I actually probably believe her yeah but, yeah you know, she was more so. excited when she crossed that finish line <laughs> yeah you know, she hadn't I don't think she knew that right. you won. yeah yeah and you know it was it was a great moment there and it's like you yeah. know that's uh, I mean talk about that again to share all this with you know the woman that you love and you know this experience and how important that is for you and how it helps you and fuels you yeah I mean I think it's something that you can't really express because it's like having this partner and then you have like every day you're training together you're living together you're making the same sacrifices mm -hmm. together for your sport and i think that is like so powerful having that partner mm -hmm. in you know such a demanding endeavor and then to like to see that all the support you've given and all the you know struggles that you've gone through together um have like worked out and it's all like come out come come out gravy it's like yeah it's just awesome like there's yeah. no other way to put it <laughs> so, well i'm glad i was here to witness it and uh, you know if you ever want to get some uh, some crossfit training with some some canadians in that uh, yeah. the canadian area yeah, yeah. there's some good ones in okay. your in that neck of the woods nice. just let us know okay we'll put you in touch That'd and probably be good they'd, and then, they'd whoop my butt but well you know good. what then you challenge them to yeah, yeah i know yeah, i know exactly. we do a little keeper yeah, exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> well hey congratulations cheers and best of luck yeah awesome